Hi everyone, welcome to the Bet Review for Cheltenham 2024 and in the video I'm going to do a little bit differently today. I'm going to talk about the whole journey of the video's um, bets for the season from the time I put the first bet off until Friday afternoon really, um, how difficult it was with the prices changing, um, how I put myself into a lot of trouble with the bank by putting poor bets off, how difficult it was to get bets off and get videos made so that they could be put up and the prices changing between actually putting the videos up like now I didn't put any bets up that the price had changed by the time the videos went online but I could have won quite a lot more if I could have got one of my videos up a bit quicker so I'm going to chronicle all that and just show how hard it is for uh, people making these videos and actually just for tipsters in general. Cheltenham's not easy. If you're looking for value, you're having to look away from the favourites. If you're trying to bet those favourites earlier in the season, you don't know where they're running. So, yeah, just the entire journey of the bets and uh, how we did. Hopefully you'll indulge me because I think you might enjoy it if you do watch the whole video. I'll put the results up of the videos at the end and uh, I am very proud of the rabbit um, coming out of the heart. I know it was late and uh, I wish it had been earlier and I've made mistakes in the bets this week. I've taken poor prices on horses trying to ensure a profit which you know isn't proper gambling really. It's not the sort of thing I'd do normally. Some of the price cuts, the, the bookmakers to be honest, like bookmakers of 60 years ago would be shamed, would be ashamed of the way bookmakers behave these days. The price slashing, bad punters are to blame as well, just the, the look to be prepared to take any prices. But yeah, uh, the overriding emotion after the festival is immense pride in managing to pull out another profit for the seventh year in a row. But Oh, it was a journey. I know it was difficult. Um, and we'll go through the whole lot, everything, <laughs> even including why I didn't watch the county hurdle and uh, just everything, where I made mistakes. And I mean, yeah, just the whole lot. And you can see how it affects me. It, sh it shouldn't. I only have 1,700 subscribers. Sometimes I don't even get that amount of people viewing the videos. I take it far more seriously than I should, and uh, but I just want to do well. I want my videos to do well. Um, I just, yeah, I just want to chronicle the whole lot, and you can tell me if you think this is a good video or not. I, I hope that a lot of people will watch this video and see how tough it is for the guys making these videos, and I'm sure that, and I do feel lucky as well because... Um, I was an hour away from probably not putting Absurd up. Then again, he went off at 12 to 1. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts. But, you know, I know it's tough for other guys. And there's probably guys... I would have been hurting today if I hadn't won. And, and there are guys that probably got a bit unlucky. You know, short heads make a big difference in this game. So I hope you'll enjoy the video. And we'll get on with how it all went, the journey. And, you know... Cheltenham 2024, the bets. Here we go. Right, so the basic bottom line was that the stakes were 465. That's because there was two non-runner no bets before the festival that weren't going to run. So I, I just uh, and went back, reverted back to having £400 less those two bets, which were £70 and £25. So there was always going to be £95 coming back out of the £465. Returns were £502.50, so a profit of £37.50. Now that could have been a loss, but it could also have been quite a lot more. And I'll go into that. I already talked about it, the Limerick Lace Gallop in the Shop double thing. But we'll go through the whole works. So, bet one was a, a void bet, non-runner, no bet, bet now. It was £70 on Jeroboam Marchand for the bumper after the Dublin Racing Festival. Now, I thought this was an amazing price when I put it up, and I wasn't planning betting out the bank, but I just thought, well, 
here's an easy out here. I'm just going to bark this 70 pound when nothing's definitely going to win the, the bumper. You know, uh, just post race, I was buzzing about this. So I thought five to one, that should be five to two. I'm putting that on my videos. That's going to win. I'm out free, you know, uh, and then I won't need to worry. So two days later, the horse is out, injured. Now, in hindsight, you look at that bet now and you think, well, the yellow clay wasn't close. You ought to know it wasn't close. Redemption Day was beaten off Jalon Duderi, who didn't win the race either. So, yeah, hindsight will show that that wasn't as good a bet as it looked at the time. Uh, I did think after that bet was taken out and uh, I had my money back, is that my warning? Is that just saying, don't do this this, se this season? And I did think, oh, well, maybe. Now, after that, I did say to one of the viewers, actually, Chris, uh, I did say, uh, after Constitution Hill was pulled out of his pit, I, I said to him, I said, I'm wondering if that horse is okay, you know. Um, I'm thinking of putting £50 each way in my bank on State Man at 11 to 4 two places with William Hill because I can't see him being out the two even if Constitution Hill wins and I'll get most of my money back and if he wins or if Constitution Hill doesn't win it doesn't run I'll probably win but yeah I was talking about that and then I sort of forgot about it and I didn't do it and hey that that's a complete aside that's probably a waste of 30 seconds of video there but I, did, I honestly did think that and I'm going to go through that lot in this video but I didn't put it up uh, and I moved on from that and then of course I get a little bit of sort of a shove saying that oh, Gala Marceau should win today at Fairy House now I thought looking at the field she would win two and eight to one I kept thinking well if she wins this she's gonna be four at one for the mayor's hurdle and you know over the extra distance and possible soft gun could she turn lossy mouth over because i was in my mind thinking that lossy mouth could get beaten now that was wrong but uh yeah so i put this bet up 30 pound each way gollum or so eight to one this is bet two and she goes to fairy house and runs an utter scandalously bad race just just horrific and also and i'm after the race i'm just thinking please 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 have a small injury because I don't want you to go to Cheltenham and lose me £60. <laughs> and all I could think about was like, £60? What did I put £60 out of the bank on that for? Oh my God. Big error. Big, big error. Woeful bet. And I'm all the way to the festival. I'm thinking that the five day decks, please don't put it in. No, she's there. Two day decks, she's there. Just, oh, poor bet. She finished fifth. She ran okay, actually, to be honest. But yeah. I never thought that bit had a chance, but that was the day I was stuck on the bank. I had to keep going then. There was no way out. And I'd already had my warning with Jeroboam Marshan, so I was like, oh, this isn't looking good. And I hadn't done state man when I said I was going to do them to people that watch the videos, but not, you know, you can't claim that. But like, you know, I'm just telling you how it was going and everything was pointing to things going wrong. And I was like, oh, should have done Stateman and Never. Now I've done Gallim or so. And she's not going to get placed. So I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And I'm in for a penny and I'm in for a pound now because I've got to keep the bank going and I've got to try and win out of this £400. <laughs> oh, that was a miserable night after Gallim or so, I can tell you. So like, like I say, if, if your tipsters or your person that you're following has ever bought it, well, don't think that like everyone on this channel has had it easy because they haven't. They, like This was bad 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 tuesday this now i did look and see how many people saw the video it was 270 and i was just praying hardly anyone put that bit off so looking at the weights then for the races um and also looking at the ultima and the boodles in particular because I, I like to get any anti-post bets out of the way so i know actually where i stand after the first two days so i can sort of plan bets and <laughs> One of my mottos when I used to work in a very high stress job was uh, prior planning prevent poor performance, you know? And uh, I used to say that to the boys so much that, like, you know, they used to be, you know, 
sick of me saying it, but it does, right? So I like to have my auntie post bets off quite early and that, yeah, and uh, to Gollum or so put me under a lot of pressure. So then, you know, I was looking, and as I said, someone said to me, oh, Milantino's got a good weight, the day of the weights. And I looked at the horse and I loved the Sergina form and I did think it looked a bit one paced, but then I thought, well, it's JP's, you know, it could have just been getting held back. So 12 to 1 looked good. So, yeah, a reasonable bet there. I, I, I wouldn't say it was a bad bet, but it wasn't a good one. I should have probably realised he was a bit too one paced and that even though he was a plot, there'd probably be something that could quicken a bit better than him. So, yeah. £25 was lost on Melantino and I, I, I had sort of, when I went into day one, I'd never considered that those were winning bets, um, uh, Gallum or so or, or Melantino. I sort of, when you put Antipos bets off, you just sort of have to assume they're not going to win. Uh, and if they do, it's a ma massive bonus. So then there was the fourth bet and Oh, I thought this was a I thought this was a great bet, and I, and I still do, and I, I'm still feeling a bit aggrieved about this one. Gio Vinco for the Ultima, fourteen to one, twenty five pound win. I thought this was a great bet, one four six. And then I start to see these little rumours that it might not run because the Apple Away was a preferred option in this race. But I was looking at it, going, well, Apple Away is going to get in anyway. Why why wouldn't Gio Vinco run? Anyway, I still don't work. I, I can't work out where they didn't run Giovinco. I really can't. So anyway, uh, he gets put in the Browns. And I'm thinking, why is he running in that when he's been beat by Stay Away Faith? Up to Files, supposed to be a weapon. Monty Starr's been talked about as a future star. And, you know, maybe in hindsight, Giovinco is very good. Just he bumped into two really, really good horses. But on the flip side of that, I think he'd have won the Ultima off one for a six. And maybe not. And then I know they got good price money for uh, the uh, for the Brown Advisory Third. So yeah, yeah, we, we we can we can live with the fact that the non-runner no bets. We were eighty five pound down on those. But the but the sixty pound <laughs> gala Marceau will haunt me. Well, <laughs> it will haunt me because it's like. Just such a poor bet to give to other people. No, not good. So on we went and uh, we were right close to the festival now. And uh, I'd had a good word a couple of times for Brazil. And I actually thought he had a good chance. Now I was looking at the weather forecast all the time. And I thought Brazil was going to have a chance in the Wednesday afternoon. The way the weather forecast was when I put him up. So I put a £25 win bet on Giovinco. Uh, sorry, on Brazil. And in the event, it wasn't the best bet. But I don't think it was a bad bet. I got the forecast wrong. The, the, the ground was quite bad that day. And I did talk about Langer Dan. Now, Langer Dan's a contentious issue, but I will talk about it a bit more. Um. I backed Langer Dan, not, but not on the videos. And I would have never put Langer Dan on the videos. But I don't like the way they did that. Now, I don't mind that the other horses won unexpected party, etc. Even though the Sudo run well. But I didn't like Langer Dan. And uh, I know people will, you know, have different opinions about it. But I just didn't like the fact that they've continually done this. And I think the handicapper should be pulled in over it as well. He's... He said his pants pulled down over Langer Dan too often to be believing those runs. And, and he should never have been dropping that horse. And that horse should not go below 150 this season. I mean, you know, fool me once, more fool me, fool me twice, we're full. You know, shocking, shocking and no. That horse should, should go up 12 pounds and not come down a cent over the winter this season. So anyway, Brazil didn't run well. He was bet six, but bet five, oh, it was a good bet. Uh, and I put it off to return about 300 odd pound and that would uh, probably get left me enough to play around on Wednesday and Thursday, but ensure that I got a profit. And Gaelic Warrior, I was really keen on him. I did think about a big bet on him, but it was too early in the festival. So 
I went with a dabble because I really fancied Cocoa Beach on the ground, on the cross country, which they said was way worse. I thought he he handball got him the best. And even though he's against the next goal cap winner, I thought he's, he's the top rated now and I'll go with him. So in the event, Gaelic Warrior wins. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, this is great. You know, Coco Beach is going to win as well. And that'll be me out clear by Wednesday and I can, you know, bet with, for fun with the rest of the money. But then the cross country got abandoned and I was back to square one because I'd already lost £85 and I'd only got a 50 profit of that bet. So I'm still chasing and uh, needing winners. Uh, so Wednesday morning comes uh, and I, I know by then Cocoa Beach isn't running so yeah, I'm £35 down I need a winner and I didn't really fancy too much on the Wednesday you know it was a day where there's a lot of odds on favourites so I went into that day not sure what I was going to do um, and eventually I put off two bets in the bumper because I thought I was going to get a result in the bumper I thought something was going to come out of the woodwork and win that and I put there for a gentle boy and set a chance now they both ran okay without running anywhere decent and it was all the ones at the front of the market that ran well and um, Patrick gave uh, Jasmine DeVoe a great ride which you know surprised me and uh, I thought the the two Elliot horses were a bit unlucky really in this race but you know that's the way it goes but the two losers for us then we had the contentious bet on £10 each way on Black Bamboo. Now it shows no return because I didn't get a return. I backed at £10 each way. I never even looked at 28 to 1, but I never looked. When I put the bet off, I only have two accounts I can get bets off with, and I put it off an account. And it was actually only playing fifth on the account I bet it on. And although 11 other bookmakers were paying sixth, I don't feel I can take a return for that bet. I'm too honest for my own good, but... You know, that's the truth. I didn't get returned, so I'm not putting it up on the bets as a return. Although anyone that followed the bet in was more than likely to have got £66 off that. It's not going down as a winner because I don't feel I can put it down as a winner. So by the end of Wednesday, the £35 that I was down after Cocoa Beach and... Uh, Gaelic Warrior bet had now been added to with another £45. So in my eyes, I'm 80 down going into Thursday. So I've been in worse positions than that. And I, uh, I just, how am I going to get out of this position was really how I was feeling now. And I thought, and you have to understand that I'm trying to put my own bets off here as well. I'm not just it's not just the videos I've got to think about. And I've got other things to do as well. I'm not, you know, Cheltenham's not the only thing in my life. I've got other things I need to do and other things that actually have to get done. And I only really fancy I know the way you're thinking. Wednesday night, I'm, I'm doing the daily preview and I'm thinking, well, I do I know the way you're thinking. But I kept thinking it's too short at 4 to 1. <laughs> 4 to 1 in hindsight, when you look at what happened, like you're thinking 4 to 1. Oh, I, just, I, don't, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. So uh, I did the daily preview and I thought, right, well, I put, I know the way you're thinking that. Now, but some of the prices on, on the day, day of the race markets, the night before, etc. Oh, God almighty, people must take any price they can get these days because they were shocking. But I looked. I was thinking, right, well, I might have 50 or 60 quid on. I know the way of thinking. That'll get me into profit and give me a little bit to play with on Friday as well. That was 11 to 4 then. By the time I looked and I put the bill, I thought, oh, no. Well, I put it up at 11 to 4. And I sat for it. You know, I did a couple of things and I sort of, I went back and said, right, okay, I'll 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 take eleven to four. It's against my nature, but I'll take eleven to four. I'm thinking eleven to four in a twenty four runner handicap. That's not good, Mark. You know, you're you are you are not betting properly here. I went in to put the bet off before I made the video. It was nine to four. I was like, oh no, I'm not taking nine to four. No, no, that's the end of that bet. I'm not doing 
So I really, really felt aggrieved about that. But anyway, I never did it. And I went and stupidly put a dab of that with Farcel Vega, which, yeah, it was a, it was a poor bet. Uh, and, you know, that's all you can say about it. It was a, it was a poor bet. And um, <sighs> he's a disappointing horse, isn't he? I think people need to give him up. Are you hearing that, Steve? Give up with Marcel Vega now. He's not the special one. He really is not the special one, okay? So, yeah, that was a losing bet. So, we're into the final day now. And, oh, no, well, that's not true. Uh, I've not done the I know the way you're thinking bet, but I'm mid-afternoon. And, I, you know, I'm watching the racing and I don't have any more bets off for the videos, but... My head, my head's whirling still. I'm, I'm still wanting winners. And I really fancied absurd for the county hurdle, and I thought, right, I'm looking at the prices and seven to one, the three six five, it's thirteen to two, a lot of others, and yeah, I, I want to be on absurd. I, I, even though Lodi Sud was my other pick in the daily preview, and I, I couldn't really decide before, but no, I, I'm going with absurd. I am going with them. So I put the video up. £45 win, 13 to 2. That's it. I'm going with Absurd. He, he's my horse. Well, I honestly put that video up, and possibly 20 minutes later, the rain started, and I was like, oh my God, what have I done now? <laughs> the horse didn't want, so I've kind of thought, oh, this is just getting worse and worse. I haven't. And then I know the way you're thinking, bolted in. And I was like, this is just un unbelievable. Like, right from the start, from the state man not putting it off and, you know, the Cocoa Beach and now I know the way you're thinking, Swan. And I was thinking, well, this is just not working out. But I am not giving it up because, you know, I'm in for a penny and I'm in for a pound and, like, I've made six profits in the row and I am not giving this up. I am absolutely not giving this up i'm gonna use you know whatever i need at the bank and i'm gonna have bets on the friday and if they win they win and if they don't they don't now i did put i did say that on the videos so i'm thinking about bets all night all night all i was thinking about was what bet can win what bet can win on friday to get me out and get me a profit and i got up on friday and i had my bet i had it Gallop into Shomps, Limerick Lace, £50 double, that's it, that'll clear the decks. Boom, I'm having that double. I went to place the bet, Limerick Lace is 9 to 4. I was like, oh. Quickly calculating it out, I was thinking, oh, yeah, okay, you're all right, we're all right, we're all right, we can still put it on at 9 to 4. <laughs> Shocking betting, because you shouldn't be taking 9 to 4 in a 3 to 1 shot. Just because, you know, but anyway, I was still doing it. I was intent. I thought about this double all night. I'm doing this double. So I put the bet off. I can even put the slip back. I put the bet off. I went, I made the video. And just before I posted the video, I said, oh, I better check the prices before I put this video up. In case Gallop and Deschamps sort of got really short, like 8 to 11. No, he was still even. And I looked. And here's... Here's Limerick Lace, six to four. I was like, oh. I mean, that almost feels like cheating. I mean, if you're on an anti post show and you said, oh, I'm taking, like, say, Bally Barn at nine to four, and everyone looked at the price and said, no, Mark, Bally Barn's not nine to four, he's six to four. So, honesty got the better of me again here. I said, oh, I'm not putting that bet up now. People will think I'm, I'm, like, just bent if I do that. I can't do that, so... Right, okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> back to the drawing board we go. Now, as I'm doing this, oh, I'd already had a bet on Lo de Sud and uh, it's on the line. That was actually a good bet. Um, they both finished second, but it was a good bet, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm back to this bet now. I, I'm certain Gallopin's going to win. I'm having a 50 double. I don't care. I just got to find the horse that's going with him. I did think, well, maybe I should put. Dino Blue in. And then I thought, well, I could have a smaller double and put Waterford Whispers in. I could put Reading Tommy Long in, but I don't really fancy him. 
so I'm not doing him. So I, I ruled him out quite quick. I thought about putting a whole lot on Lode Sud, the whole hundred, but I wanted to back Nurburgring, so and I did do him, but it was the double. What am I putting in the double? A gallop in the chance. And eventually I just went with Fern's lot because I thought if Lord the suit now Absurd had been drifting all this time, so I was actually giving up on him because I thought he's not gonna like this off ground. So I I'll I've given up on Absurd by now. I'm I mean that was such a lucky bit. If I hadn't put it off when I did, if I'd made that video and the rain had started, I wouldn't have put the video up. And then then I'd be talking about a three hundred pound loss just now. Although I may have put the limerick lace bet up sooner. So, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts. But I'm, I'm trying to explain to you what we're going through as people who make the podcasts here. I'm not wanting criticism and I'm not wanting applause for what I'm doing. I'm just saying how, how it is for us. So, yeah, I put Nurburgring up because I did fancy him. Now, I thought he was a wee bit out the back for my liking and he did stay on well. But he would have never won because he, was, he wasn't quite as good as the others. But, yeah. I put up Lo de Sud in the double, and then I put up Gallop in the Champs and Ferns Lot. So I, I, what I was thinking was, I may have both of them running for me, and I may have one, but that was the race I'd studied the most later in the day. So I, I wanted the only other horse I thought about was Old Castle de Mott, but I didn't really have the funds to back them all. So it ended up being two bets on the Friday, Nur Nurburgring. And Gallop in the Champs and Ferns Lock. And I love Ferns Lock, but he lost his race before the start. As soon as they took that hood off, he just went crazy. He was trying to bolt at the start. He was fly leaping. He was going all over the place. He had no chance. And, and then he was way too free for the first two fences. And you knew the game was up. But by then, Absurd had won. So I knew I'd made a profit. So it wasn't so bad. But And the feeling... Uh, right... Now, here you go. I'll tell you the truth here. This is what I'm like. Got up in the morning. when After I'd done all the bets, I, I put this pair of boots on. I consider them to be my, my, my lucky boots here. So I put my lucky boots on. I didn't watch the county. I sat on the stairs uh, step. I was listening to it, but I wasn't watching it. It was on the telly, but I wasn't watching it. And I have to say, when Lord of Sud hit the front, I was quite happy thinking, right, well, I'm going to have this tab already. Especially as absurd. He kept saying absurd is held up and lost. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, they're just protecting the handicap mark with that until uh, until uh, next time. And then the handbrake will come off. And I was like, well, Lodi Sud might win and that'll do. And hopefully nothing will come out of the park and beat him. And when he started to say absurd was making ground, I was like, I honestly, like, I, I don't think I breathed for about 40 seconds <laughs> when he started talking about Absurd coming and then Absurd made a mistake at the last and I thought, oh, well, at least Lode Sud might still win. And the elation when Absurd won. Now, elation over backing a 13 to 2 winner that actually went off 12 to 1 is, is shocking, really. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just amazing feeling when he crossed the line. Now, the Lord of Sud bet was down. Then we had Gallop in the Champs win, and I, I thought I had a chance with Ferns Lock, but he, you know, did what he did at the start. But and, and there's where I do feel aggrieved now. That Now, you look at the bets, and it could have gone wrong. If that rain had started earlier with Absurd, I might not have put it up. But it could have gone so much better as well, because Coco Beach could have run. And won, but he didn't. But you know, if he'd run and lost, then I would have been even further behind. So you know, on his the seventy pound off that bet, you know, is part of the winnings that's got me the profit. Um, and then you've got the other side of the coin where you've got I should have been way more in profit because that Limerick lace and gallop in the Champs bet that I was always going to put off on the Friday, I didn't get a chance. Because the prices were changing so much. So, yeah. We'll just take what we got. But it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot worse as well, though. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe this is a way, way long-winded way of saying that we've made £37.50. 
most of the bets were fairly reasonable, but there were some that were really poor. Um, hindsight would say that the bumper bet wasn't so great, but I, I, I can't hold that. I thought that was a good bet at the time, and I thought the price was really good, especially with uh, how that bumper had worked out in previous years. I thought that price was way wrong. Uh, the Gallum or so bet, we, that was a write-off. Like, I mean, I don't know words worse than woeful, you know, without swearing and things, but, you know, that is, is it's a bad bet. It's a bad, bad, bad bet. Um, there's no question about that. Bet three, yeah, I mean, it's an average bet. We've got a good price bet on a horse who was probably not good enough. Fourth bet, Giovinco, yeah, good bet. I, uh, yeah, good bet for me. Brazil, I think he'll prove out better than he was. Um, Gaelic Warrior, yeah, I'm impressed with that bet for myself. Like, I, I know people will say, oh, it's a winning bet, you know, so you're always going to say that. But, like, I went against the crowd with that. Well, a lot of people said that horse couldn't win going that direction, uh, and I stuck my neck out on him because a lot of people were saying, no, don't back Gaelic Warrior on your videos. And I was like, no... He's winning that race now. And I sort of, in a little way, I feel like I should have gone in on him at fours and just gone with a single. And a, and a decent single as well. Um, like I say, yeah, the Brazil where it wasn't too bad. Um, the, um, the bet on Argento Boy... I just went with small bets there. The Argento boy wasn't too bad. The bet on um, set a chance, that was the same. Reasonable. Black Bamboo, now I never took any winnings off that bet, but I that was a good bet. 28 to 1, like he went off 14. He was a good each way chance. I mean, he was nowhere near the level of the, the front three, but he's well handicapped. It was a decent bet. The bet on Fossil Vega, yeah, you can't, you can't say that was too hot now in hindsight um fossil big gun but it is ahead yeah i'll tell you what the two jockeys on brighter days ahead and jade the Gruzy, they're needing a word in their ear um i think in the race reviews that I'll, I'll go through these races and how i think they went and you know what i saw in them but like yeah i don't think that was finest hour for town and lord kennedy really although the winner won well i, I think they let that pace be too sh uh, too slow. The absurd bet. Now, yeah, I was lucky about when I placed it, but I can honestly say that I fancied that horse from a long way out. And the only reason I wasn't putting, you know, money on it, Auntie Puss, was because of under control. Because I really fancied under control in that race. I think he she's off 138, an unbelievably well handicapped horse. And I kept thinking she was the winner of this. And yeah, if I'd had more knowledge that under control was definitely not going to run and the Henderson Yard weren't happy, then I would have gone with absurd. Pretty heavy, I think, on the post because I, I fancied that horse. To, I thought the form was strong, but I also felt like, you know, it was a bit of a non jigger a couple of times as well. So I was keen on that. Load of Sud and it's on the line. That was a good bet. Load of Sud was the only danger. Um, it's on the line. Was never going to win, but O'Connor gave that a hell of a ride to get second and be so close. Um, Nurberg ring held up too far back, but it wasn't quite good enough. And the other bet, the final bet, is one that aggrieves me a bit because it, it should have been galloping the champ and Moonlight Lace. And... Uh, and Ferns Locke never showed his true ability. In conclusion to this video, yeah, I'll actually make this piece on its own. I have to be proud of uh, making the profit again. A few people I have to thank. I mean, like, a few of my mates probably uh, sick of hearing from me, like, what do you think I should do? Um, how do you think I should play this? Uh, Poor Pete's probably sick of hearing from me. Some other lads that bet seriously and are good lads, uh, Chris and Elliot, like they're, you know, I've contacted them quite a lot um, during the week. You know, I, I think they both had good weeks. Um, 
very unlucky. Uh, they they were all on brighter days ahead for you know at big prices and good bets and I felt for them when that race was going on even though I was on Jed de Grugy and I thought Townend was shocking on her but like I don't think it was Kennedy's finest hour either. Yeah, I felt for them that day. Um, and I've got a couple of contacts as well. I don't, I don't ever name them. So uh, all in all, happy with the profit. Could have been a lot more, but yeah, I, I carry golf bags. And uh, seven profits in a row. And I'm, I'm immensely proud, immensely proud of that record uh, at Cheltenham. Not the profit I wanted, clearly, but I mean, I fancied a lot of horses. Maybe I should just go with one horse per day. Because I fancied Gaelic Warrior probably the strongest out of day one at the prices. Day two at the prices, I probably I probably wouldn't have had a winner on day two at the prices, really. Day three, I definitely fancied I know the way you're thinking the most. Day four, now people would argue, did I fancy Lord de Sud more than I fancied uh, Absurd? Probably... In my mind, probably not, actually. Yeah. I, I just kept feeling that Skeleton Source was running really well, but gun to the head, I think, like, I loved the form of Absurd, but then I would have said Absurd most of the time up until the rain came on Thursday, but then probably would have switched over to Lo de Sud as the rain fell and it got softer. Overall, I love doing Cheltenham Chart. Absolutely love doing Cheltenham Chart. Do I love the bank? Well, I love it now because I made a profit, but I would have felt awful if I was sitting here thinking I was £300 down if Absurd hadn't won. So, you know, pros and cons to the bank. And, and like, oh, so hard to bet this week. So, so hard. And when you're making videos, it's even worse because I need to get the bet off and then I need to put it onto a video. And I, I like my videos to look quite good. So I can't just make it and then upload it and my videos take forever to upload I, I'm not on this really quick links now I've been offered it and I think I'm gonna have to take it because like yeah that cost me this week all in all a really tough festival now I'm gonna go through it in the race reviews and that's gonna be a different type of video Um, I'm gonna talk about all the horses how they're on how I saw the festival this is how I saw my betting and how I the journey, the journey of the bets, really. The highs, pff, weren't many of them, but oh my God, sitting on that stairs when Absurd came through was a bit of a highlight. Uh, and uh, I knew that I'd won someone else quite a lot of money as well. But like, I mean, for me, it was about the videos. It wasn't about what I won on that bet. It was about the videos, you know, clearing a profit. Because it does mean quite a bit to me. I mean, there's no point in making these if you're not going to be bothered about your results and i am far too bothered about the results because you know it's not that many people when you well, i've not got forty thousand people watching this or fifty thousand people watching this and if i did i don't think i could cope now there are videos that will have done way better than me way better but overall consistently i've done okay but by god I hope I don't have to pull the rabbit out of the hat on the Friday much longer because my heart can't take it. But I want to thank you all for watching the videos. The race reviews will come out like day one, day two, day three, day four. And then I'm going to take a wee break because I think probably Alison would like to see me a little bit. <laughs> and the dogs certainly need a bit more attention than they've had recently. So... Thank you for watching the videos. I really, really hope that this season I can do Entry and Punchestown. I hope this video has given you an insight into how hard it is for the people who make these videos. And if they haven't done well this season, please, please show them a bit of respect. Anybody that's putting their neck on the line doing this. You're on a hiding to nothing, really. And I'm not monetized. I don't ask for subscribers. And even the ones who do, you know, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. And I know I'm being a wee bit too sort of honest here, but like it's not easy. It really isn't easy. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the journey video. 
but I hope you were on absurd. And I wish, I wish I'd had more on at 12 to 1. But the honest truth is, I thought he didn't have a chance when that weather came bad. So I am so pleased. And Old Town Inns had it off me a couple of times. Is that ride on Kilcratty? He, he, like, he got forgiven for that after um, Vauban and Stepan. But yeah, he gave up a hell of a ride. So. But then again, like I had a lot of money riding on Jeter Greasy, so I'm not giving him too much credit because uh, he's riding the best horses at the end of the day. Thank you for watching. I won't take any more of your time out. I hope you have a good few weeks. I'll be back with the race reviews. Bye for now.